Chapter Twelve of the Ice Maiden and Other Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Ellie Cat. The Ice Maiden, Chapter Twelve: The Evil Powers. Rudy forsook Bex and went on his way home, in the fresh, cool air up the snow-covered mountain where the Ice Maiden ruled. The leafy trees which lay beneath him looked like potato vines. Fir trees and bushes became less frequent. The alpine roses grew in the snow, which lay in little spots like linen put out to bleach. There stood a blue anemone. He crushed it with the barrel of his gun. Higher up, two chamois appeared, and Rudy's eyes gained luster, and his thoughts took a new direction. But he was not near enough to make a good shot. He ascended still higher, where only stiff grass grows between the blocks of stone. The chamois were quietly crossing the snow field. He hurried hastily on. The fog was descending, and he suddenly stood before the steep rocky wall. The rain commenced to fall. He felt a burning thirst. Heat in his head, cold in all his limbs. He grasped his hunting flask, but it was empty. He had not thought of filling it when he rushed up the hill. He had never been ill, but now he was so. He was weary, and had a desire to throw himself down to sleep, but everything was streaming with water. He endeavored to collect his thoughts, but all objects danced before his eyes. Suddenly he perceived a newly built house leaning against the rocks, and in the doorway stood a young girl. Yes, it appeared to him that it was the schoolmaster's Annette, whom he had once kissed whilst dancing, but it was not Annette, and yet he had seen her before perhaps in Grindelwald, on the evening when he returned from the shooting festival at Interlaken. "'Where do you come from?' asked he. "'I am at home,' said she. "'I tend my flock.' "'Your flock? Where do they pasture?' "'Here are only cliffs and snow.' "'You have a ready answer,' said she, and laughed. "'Below there is a charming meadow. There are my goats. I take good care of them. I lose none of them. What is mine remains mine.' "'You are bold,' said Rudy. "'So are you,' answered she. "'Have you any milk? "'Do give me some. "'My thirst is intolerable.' "'I have something much better than milk,' said she, "'and you shall have it. "'Travellers came yesterday with their guide, "'but they forgot a flask of wine, "'such as you have never tasted. "'They will not come for it. "'I shall not drink it. "'So drink you.' "'She brought the wine, "'poured it in a wooden cup, "'and handed it to Rudy.' "'That is good,' said he. "'I have never drunk such a warming, such a fiery wine.' His eyes beamed, a life, a glow came over him. All sorrow and depression seemed to die away. Gushing, fresh human nature stirred itself within him. "'Why, this is the schoolmaster's Annette!' exclaimed he. "'Give me a kiss.' "'Yes, give me the beautiful ring which you wear on your finger.' "'My engagement ring?' just that one said the young girl and pouring wine into the cup put it to his lips and he drank then the joy of life streamed in his blood the whole world seemed to belong to him why torment oneself everything is made for our enjoyment and happiness the stream of life is the stream of joy and forgetfulness is felicity he looked at the young girl it was annette and then again not annette still less an enchanted phantom as he had named her when he met her near grindelwald the girl on the mountain was fresh as the newly fallen snow blooming as the alpine rose and light as a kid and a human being like rudy he wrapped his arm about her looked in her strange clear eyes yes only for a second but was it spiritual life or was it death which flowed through him was he raised on high, or did he sink into the deep, murderous ice-pit, deeper and ever deeper? He saw icy walls like bluish-green glass, numberless clefts yawned around, and the water sounded as it dropped, like a chime of bells. It was pearly, clear, and shone in bluish-white flames. The ice-maiden gave him a kiss, which made him shiver from head to foot, and he gave a cry of pain. He staggered and fell. It grew dark before his eyes, but soon all became clear to him again. The evil powers had had their sport with him. The alpine maiden had vanished, the mountain hut had vanished, the water beat against the bare rocky walls 
and all around him lay snow. Rudy, wet to the skin, trembled from cold, and his ring had disappeared, his engagement ring, which Babette had given him. He tried to fire off his rifle, which lay near him in the snow, but it missed. Humid clouds lay in the clefts like firm masses of snow, and Vertigo watched for her powerless prey. Beneath him in the deep chasm it sounded as if a block of the rock was rolling down, and was endeavoring to crush and tear up all that met it in its fall. In the mill sat Babette and wept. Rudy had not been there for six days. He who had been so wrong, he who must beg her forgiveness, because she loved him with her whole heart. End of chapter 12